Number 105, describe the molecular structure around the indicated atom or atoms, and then we want to find out that molecular structure for the nitrogen atom in nitric acid, which is HNO3, or also written as HONO2. Okay, so we have to find out the molecular structure, which is this big table over here. These are your different molecular structures, whether your um, atom is presenting a linear structure or a bent or a trigonal pyramid, sawhorse, seesaw, square planar. These are all the different types of molecular structures. But as we can see, this all comes from drawings, aka Lewis structures. So if they're asking for molecular structures, just take a moment and draw out the Lewis structure for your uh, covalent compound. It might take, you know, one extra second, but it's way easier to visualize exactly what's going on. And that way, the chances of making a mistake gets less and less. So we're going to draw the Lewis structure for uh, nitric acid. Now, there's tons of videos on this channel just designated to getting your feet wet as to how to draw Lewis structures. And I go every step of the way, step by step, for those videos. So you can always check those out. This one will kind of be a quick inversion. Um, what you can do if you want is pause the video and try to draw out HNO3 and then see if your uh, structure matches mine. So let's see. Now, they do give us a little heads up here where HNO3 is really written as hydrogen to oxygen to nitrogen to these two oxygens. So when they start drawing it out kind of like in a long, long form, we're going to make our backbone of our Lewis structure from left to right. So in this case, we have a hydrogen, so we'll say H, that's bound to an oxygen, so HO, that's bound to the nitrogen, and then it seems like this nitrogen has the two oxygens. Notice how they didn't write like NOO. This would mean the nitrogen is bound to the oxygen, then which is bound to another oxygen. But they wrote it as NO2, not no. <laughs> no. Ah, anyway, so the nitrogen is bound to the two oxygens. So does it really matter if you put one of them up top and one of them on the bottom? No. Right, you could put one on top and maybe one over here. That's fine with me. Maybe I'll do it that way. But there's the backbone. Now we gotta add our bonds. Now remember, hydrogen only likes to have one bond, right? So that's a gimme. And we always have at least a single bond for all the other connections. So we got this going on. Now, try to get your octet rule. Oxygen has valence electrons of six, so it used two to get these single bonds. So you got four more electrons, and if you do your four dots, this one has the octet. So now we just have to do it again for the other ones. Now, one of them, to get that octet, we have to give a double bond because um, oxygen has six valence electrons, so one, two, and then three, four, five, six. And because of that, there's your octet. So maybe I'll just draw it like this. But now this oxygen, well, he wanted to make a double bond, right? Because everybody else has the two bonds around the oxygen. But if I do add one more bond here, this nitrogen has 10 electrons, and that is not good, right? Nitrogen cannot have an expanded octet. It can only have the octet. So in this case, we just have to give the extra um, pair of electrons here. And this is your Lewis structure for nitric acid, HNO3. Now, there are charges here. Can you guess them? It would, it would be a good practice for you to figure out if there are any formal charges. And see if your formal charges match mine. There would be a positive on the nitrogen and the negative on the oxygen. So we'll just put that there. But do we really need to uh, know that for doing the molecular structure? Absolutely not. The only thing that matters is your atoms in the right place, the bonds, and the lone pairs. So now they wanted specifically the nitrogen atom. So I'm going to focus in on the nitrogen. And in order to use this chart, 
we always start off by just finding out the total number of atoms and the lone pairs around that nitrogen in this case, or that atom. So for nitrogen, how many atoms is bound around this nitrogen? Well, you got one oxygen, so that's one atom. You got another oxygen up top here that's bound to, and you got another oxygen. Notice how we're not going to calculate or find out for the hydrogen because they're not directly bound. So for nitrogen, it has three atoms. And then we have to find out the lone pairs. Were there any lone pairs or dots around the nitrogen? No, it was all bonds. So zero lone pairs. You add them together to find the total. So three plus zero is three. And that's the number that we are using for the general number to just find out what category we're in. So we're in this tier right here. But now you have different variations. You either have a zero or one lone pair. And since we had zero, we are in trigonal planar mode. So the nitrogen, the molecular geometry for nitrogen would be trigonal planar. And that means that even though I drew for my Lewis structure, uh, even though I drew the bond angles uh, as if they had 90 degrees, in reality, they are all 120. So it kind of would be like if we actually drew it with the bond angles, it would be kind of like this peace sign idea where there's like a little piece here. And then all these are 120, 120, 120. But when you're drawing Lewis structures, it do, you don't really have to draw the, the angles exactly. Um, that's for organic, <laughs> because then they really look at if you have those angles right. But we love orgo. We stan orgo. <laughs> we stan organic chemistry. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. I hope this... Uh, helps you out, let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in more uh, lessons. I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard. Always keep learning. That's how we get better. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.